This is going to serve as a preview of the book part of these quadratic word problems. The 7.7c is now the calculator part. So uh, what you need to do in these problems is just be able to set up a function. This problem says an automobile dealership sells only 35 new cars uh, per month when the markup over factory price is $3,000. Uh, for each $200 decrease in the markup, um, that's kind of it. For each $200 decrease in the markup, the dealership can expel, expect to sell an additional uh, five cars per month. Sorry, I'll correct that here. So anyway, um, we can. This is a similar type of problem where I know that um, the uh, the nor like normally, if I look at how much money this thing is making, and I'll call that revenue. Um, and I'm going to call it normal revenue because we just want to look at this uh, from a normal perspective. Normal revenue would just be 35 new cars per month and the markup is 3,000. So that's how much they normally make. Um, but if I let N equal the number of $200 decreases. So it, I'm not saying it's $200. I'm saying it's how many times you decrease that because you're, you're decreasing it in $200 chunks. Um, then I can say that the revenue um, of, of n, r of n, is equal to, um, well, when I decrease the uh, markup by $200, I sell two, 30, or five more cars. So I start at 35 cars, but I add five cars times the number of decreases. So if I have one decrease, I'm going to do five more cars. Two decreases, I'm going to do 10 more cars. Uh, but then I multiply that by, I'm going to change this 3,000. So it's 3,000 but I'm, I'm decreasing it by $200 um, times the number of markups. So this tells me kind of this is just a general setup. One thing is increasing, the other thing is decreasing. Um, so this is the function that I'm going to maximize. And like I'm going to constantly say, maximization and minimization occurs at the vertex. This is a parabola. If I multiply it all out, I get um, negative 1,000 n squared, that would be minus 7,000 plus 1,500, so minus 8,000 n, <coughs> sorry, plus 8,000 n, and then plus 105,000. So this is kind of the, uh, the, fun the equation I'm dealing with. Pause for a second. Now, one of the ways that I can tell what the vertex is is if I complete the square. So if I do that, I can go negative 1,000, uh, pull that out, and I get n squared. Uh, this would be minus 8n plus a box. Then I have plus 105,000 minus, and that's going to be negative 1,000 times whatever that box is. Well, half of 8 squared is 16 and 16. So my r of n is negative 1,000, n minus 4 quantity squared, plus, this is going to be 105,000, um, plus 1,600. So this is going to be 121,000. So my vertex is now at 4, comma, 121,000, uh, which I'm just going to put without a comma because that's going to be confusing with the comma of the ordered pair. So that's the vertex, uh, and what that again tells me is uh, two things. It tells me um, that at four $200 decreases, we make the max profit, or I should say we make the maximum what revenue. So going back to what the question asks, it wants to know what should the markup be per car, um, and it starts at 3000 and we subtract four times two hundred dollars so that would be three thousand minus four times two hundred is twenty two hundred dollars so twenty two hundred dollars should be the markup uh, not three thousand if I want to maximize revenue given the conditions so that is one way to handle it um, a second way and I bring this up because um, and I'll be honest, Mrs. Manton and I agreed we would do it this way, and then I didn't do it, and I made the keys. Um, so I did it the keys entirely by finding the vertex. But a perfectly legitimate second way, um, and one that you should know about, or at least be kind of familiar with, is let's go back to the original um, quadratic. I've got r of n is equal to negative 1,000 n squared plus 
8,000 N um, and then plus one zero five zero zero zero. If you don't want to complete the square, a shortcut is to know that the vertex is always at um, negative b over two a comma something. So if I know that, then I know that. So I keep having to insert space here, and you can see what problems we're going to be getting to here in a second. Okay, so if I know that, I know that ne negative b over 2a is negative 8,000 over 2 times negative 1,000. That's my negative b over 2a. So that means that the vertex is at 4. <clears throat> and that's what we got up there for the vertex. And then if I want to figure out what the y value is, I just do r of 4. But the question didn't even want that. It just wants to know for price decreases. Um, and then I can go ahead and do the same sort of analysis I did right here to figure out that $2,200 should be the markup. So either way, uh, you know, I kind of like finding the vertex because it makes sense. It's good to practice with completing the square. But a good shortcut is, again, to do that the vertex is always at negative b over 2a. So let's look at another problem. Um, this apparently got reassigned to the number 1. Let's see if I can get it to number 2 just to look good. There we go. I'm going to have to redo the other one too, but we'll wait till we get there. Okay, let's insert a crazy amount of space. Draw, insert space, see if we can do it. Okay, get down there. Probably didn't go down that far, but that's okay. I'll throw some more space down. You probably don't want to watch me do this, but... Okay. Um, ball is thrown vertically upward. Vertically upward. Um, that means that it has initial speed of 48 feet per second. Its height in feet is given by h is equal to this. I'm going to rewrite that as h of t is equal to 48t minus 16t squared. I'm actually going to make an effort to graph this by hand just so I can get a visual of what this looks like. So if I take 16t out, uh, I'm going to get um, I'm going to get the uh, let's see 3 minus t. So I know that my zeros occur at uh, 0 and 3. How do I know that? Well, if I kind of put these in parentheses and I look at my critical points, something we've done many times, those are my zeros here. Um, this one here would be t equals 0. This one is, if I set this equal to 0, this is t equals 3. So my zeros occur at 0 and 3. So if I graph this, um, this is going to be 0, this is going to be 3. I'm just graphing quadrant 1, and this is the shape it's going to form. Well... What's the uh, what's this? Where does that occur at? Well, that occurs at one and a half or three halves. So how high did the ball go? Well, I know that at t equals three halves. And if I kind of rewrite this as negative sixteen t squared plus forty eight t, and do that negative b over two a, that is negative forty eight over two times thirty two. Um, or sorry, 2 times 16, that is negative 3 halves. So, um, sorry, that, I'm messing my negatives up. Negative b over 2a, that would be a negative, that's positive. There we go. Positive 3 halves. Now they match. Um, come on. Give it one second. There we go. Okay, there we go. Ne positive 3 halves. Put that there. So at t equals 3 halves, I could go ahead and plug 3 halves in. I could say, what is h of 3 halves? And that would tell me what the height is at that point. So h of 3 halves is 48 times 3 halves minus 16 times 3 halves squared. Um, half of 48 times 3 is 72. 72 minus, this would be 16 times 9 fourths, which is 72 minus 36. Uh, which is 36 feet. Um, so that's one way to look at it. Um, sorry, I'm going to give us some more space here because I want to look at it one other way before we jump to this last problem. Um, another way is to take this original problem, so h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 48t, and just complete the square on it. So negative 16 t squared minus 3t plus, then I go half of 3 squared is 9 fourths, and then I subtract that 9 fourths out, but after I multiply it by negative 16, so negative 16 times 9 fourths, and then I factor, 
a negative 16, t minus 3 halves squared. This would be plus 16 um, times 9 fourths, which is plus 36. And my vertex is at 3 halves 36, which is the same thing we just got right up above. That at time equals 3 halves, this ordered pair, 3 halves 36, um, my vertical is, is uh, 36 feet. Okay, last one, and let's reassign this number three, or that will bother me, probably you too. If two numbers differ by six, what is the least possible value of their product? Well, let's let n equal the first number, and I can do n minus six equal the smaller number. So n times n minus six is equal to the product, and I'm kind of creating a function that that's the product. So this gives me a, uh, a parabola that's going to look like this because it has a positive a value. Okay, a couple of ways I can look at this. Um, I know that if I graph that, I get something that's going to look like this. Um, and how do I know that? Well, again, my zeros are 0 and 6. And it's an upwards parabola, so it's going to have to do something like this, crossing here and here at 6, which means that this point occurs at 3. And I could go ahead and plug in 3 right now, um, which I know is halfway in between 0 and 6. 3 and 3 minus 6 is negative 9. So that would be the product that, of the ver or that occurs. That would be what occurs at the vertex. This is the ordered pair, um, 3, negative 9. Okay, let's say I didn't want to do that. Let's say I wanted to multiply this out and get p of n is equal to n squared minus 6n. Well, I could go ahead and do negative b over 2a, which is the x value of the vertex. That is 6 over 2, which is 3. Then plug 3 right back in, and I get negative 9. Or I could go uh, p of n equals n squared minus 6n plus a box minus a box. Oops, we know it's going to be 9. 9 and 9 complete the square and I get n minus 3 squared minus 9 which means my vertex is at 3 negative 9 so however we do it we get that the this vertex happens at 3 negative 9 so the least product is negative 9 not produce product alright that's it